Hello, and welcome to Coming Together, Coming Apart. As you can tell, this episode is a bit shorter than a regular episode. I am taking a bit of a break this week, but I did not want to leave you with nothing to fill your ears. We're just a few weeks away from the invasion of South Korea, so, like I did on the 25th of June, I want to dive a bit into what was reported at the time of the invasion. What I am about to read is taken straight from the front page of the Chicago Sunday Tribune from June 25th, 1950 under the headline, Korean Red Strikes South, as written by Associated Press Correspondents and published by the Tribune. Communist troops from North Korea invaded South Korea at dawn today on a wide front, but United States military advisors said the drive was virtually stopped by this afternoon. Heavy artillery fire was continuing, however, as the North Koreans attacked at least 11 points. Tanks supported the attacks on some fronts. The advisor said the Northerners pushed three miles south of the border at one point before they ran into the first determined resistance from South Korean forces. Strange planes droned over the uneasy capital of the Republic, sponsored by the United States. No bombs were dropped. There were no reports of aerial attacks anywhere. It was believed likely the Northerners would wait for skies to clear before sending planes over. They are known to have Russian-made fighters. The attacks were spaced along the 38th parallel which divides this country at the forefront of the Cold War between East and West. Seaborne forces struck at two points along the East Coast. The southernmost force hit 40 miles south of the border. On the West Coast, isolated Anjin Peninsula was under attack and South Korean forces were withdrawing. Defense Minister Shin Sung-mo announced reinforcements were being rushed to the front. The defense minister said the South held the upper hand in one sector, although the invaders were backed by 40 big guns and 20 tanks. One report said two of the northern tanks had been knocked out by fire from South Korean pillboxes. Amphibious landings were reported on the east coast, as much as 40 miles south of the dividing line. The border city of Quezon, only 40 miles to the northwest, was said to be partly occupied by the invaders. Approximately 500 United States officers and men of military advisory mission are here. In addition, there are numerous United States officials, businessmen, and missionaries. The last United States combat troops were withdrawn from South Korea in June of 1949. Seoul has a population of approximately 1 million. Already, Anjin Peninsula, northwest of Seoul, was reported being evacuated. Southern troops were getting out as best they could. United States advisors never have considered the peninsula defensible. It is cut off entirely from the rest of South Korea, except by sea. Northern assault was reported in regiment strength in the Chuncheon area, about 50 miles northeast of this capital. Two amphibious landings were made on the east coast, at points 20 and 40 miles south of the border. The first came at Kanmun, 20 miles to the south of the border, at 6 a.m. The second hit Samchok, 40 miles south of the border, at 9 a.m. The two landing forces were estimated at 600 men each. Quezon, only 40 miles northwest of Seoul, was partly occupied by the invaders this morning, it was reported. Quezon is less than a mile south of the border. The present division of Korea was made possible at the Yalta and Potsdam conferences, in violation of the agreement reached at the Cairo conference among the United States, Great Britain, and China, pledging Korea its freedom. These deals made possible the establishment of a Russian-dominated government of that part of Korea situated north of the 38th parallel. Although the southern part, which now constitutes the Korean Republic, is more populous, with an estimated 21 million inhabitants, the northern half is more industrialized and contains valuable mineral deposits. After the war, the surrender of the Japanese in South Korea was accepted by the United States, which thereupon installed occupation troops. These troops were withdrawn on June 30, 1949, with the exception of some 500 technical military advisors to the Republican Army of Sing Mun Rhee, 75-year-old president of the Republic. Considerable progress has been made in training this army, which is now estimated to number in excess of 100,000 men, equipped with American and Japanese weapons. The morale of the defenders is high. Invading communist guerrilla bands have been efficiently and systematically wiped out. Many of Korea's Republican military leaders have been impatient to move with greater force against the Reds. As we already know, and as we will soon see, not all of this information is true. 
the South Korean troops were neither as well trained nor as well motivated as their northern counterparts. We'll talk about this more in the coming weeks, but the initial invasion was a rousing success for the North and disastrous for the South. This mistaken information has two probable causes. One, things in Korea were chaotic at the onset of the war. There was a lot of misinformation and disinformation, and communications were not really well developed enough to quickly and accurately get answers to important questions. Two, the information war began as soon as Red Boots crossed to the 38th parallel, and ensuring that the American public did not know just how disastrous the first days of the war went was key to ensuring domestic support for rapid intervention under the banner of the United Nations. Without that initial intervention or the later intervention by the Chinese, the Korean War could have been over much more quickly than it actually was. But we will get to all of that in due time. We will return to our regularly scheduled programming next Tuesday, September 1st, with Episode 11, The Final Rift, and in a couple weeks we will reach the North Korean invasion of South Korea. I am Trevor Owens, and this has been an addendum episode of Coming Together, Coming Apart. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have an enjoyable week.